people, um, today it's uh, Kittens and Keeps again, um, my continuation of the Trail of Cthulhu Shanghai Bullets um, adventure, which has now gone completely off the rails. Um, uh, basically, yesterday I wanted to bring Shanghai Bullets to a conclusion, and I already had an idea of what I wanted to do afterwards, how I wanted to move it all into a campaign, and I had this nice segue idea, and it was all brilliant. Uh, and then Angelique Dupont went completely off her rocker and um, threatened her best friend with a gun. But one thing after another. Um, in the in yesterday's episode, the group managed to get the um, star um, mirror from a bunch of three triads. So I basically changed that story around. So there was a lot of kicking, screaming. Um, Angelique shot a guy. The nun kicked a another guy in the, well, you know, rah, rah, re, kick him in the knee, rah, rah, Rolox, kick him in the other knee. And there was a lot of um, men lying on the floor um, and on the ground in the middle of Shanghai, writhing in pain. So basically they decided to take the mirror to England and hide it there because they realized they couldn't, they couldn't destroy it. They got on a, a ship to San Francisco and in San Francisco they left the ship. They needed to take a train to the East Coast to then take a boat to uh, London and uh, on that's when I wanted to have them kidnapped because I wanted I needed them to be in London in 1929 so the the uh, the Shanghai bullet story is set in October 1938 um that was neatly done you know Dios ex machina beautifully executed um I make them wake up in the dark, um, and uh, as they um, as as the story unfolds, and they find out that they're in London, and it turns out that they are in a house which is owned by an A. Dot Dupont M. D. So that's Angelique, who's obviously practicing as a psychiatrist in London. It turns out that she's quite well off, actually very well off. Um, and uh, two things happen. First of all, the nun was kind of cool with this, but then again, she does believe in, you know, resurrection of the dead and, um, you know, Lazarus isn't isn't something that she's not familiar with and she does believe in Jesus Christ and the whole water to wine thing. So the fact that she is transported back in time to a completely different place didn't really phase her. The fact that she seems to have had a life in London for the last 10 years didn't phase her either. The fact that she has maintained her age, although she has gone back in time, didn't phase her either. Um, basically, she all went, you know, molder on us. So she was like, yeah, that's totally fine. And then Angelique turned into Agent Scully and was like, I, I'm having none of this and walks out, um, which was... Um, a little bit unexpected. Um, having said this, um, the role playing was excellent. So I, um, I mean, the other two, Emily, Emily was kind of okay with everything because um, there was food in the in the pantry, so she was she was um, she was fine, and there was nice whiskey. So uh, the other two brought Angelique back, and then I had to invent a character which I hadn't planned for, the best friend, um, Jane Halliwell. Um, who uh, I thought, you know, could could kind of, you know, calm Angelique down and, you know, make it possible for me to proceed with the story. But that didn't work because uh, Sarah, uh, the player, actually pulled a gun um, on her best friend, whom she'd never met. And um, it all, you know, went pear-shaped from there. Um, I had tremendous fun. Um so I had to invent another character, you know, well, I had kind of invented that other character already, but then now I have to give her a backstory. They will probably need to interact with her. So um, I'm com going into a completely different direction. So now I need to find a way to actually get to the storyline of the Chaosium book, which I was going to use um, to make it fit. But then again, that's that's going to be a really interesting challenge. Um, but I have to say, um, we had everything yesterday. We had scuffling and shooting people and bargaining in a shop. And of course, the nun basically gave away the game when they went to the bookshop to to buy the to buy one of those old books um, to find out more about star vampires by actually um, saying that she had burned one of three extant copies 
um, in an accident um, and then saying, well, you know, this means that the remaining two are much more valuable now. And of course, the book, uh, the, the, the owner of the bookshop um, agreed and um, charged a terribly high price, which which they couldn't afford. Um, and in the second bookshop, actually, um, they, they fared a lot better and they managed to buy um, <clears throat> a book um, that was, first of all, on her list to take back to her monastery or her, her, her convent, really. Um, you know, obviously, going back in time, probably the convent um, will never burn down because I don't think um, that um, Sister Mary Constance will ever return. Uh, she's now in London and um, things are getting really interesting. <clears throat> Uh, and then we had, um, you know, we could use the scuffling rules, and um, you know, I, I really liked um, the fighting in 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 this uh, in in talk. I also decided that um, I'm going to use um, attacks of opportunity. So if you run away from somebody, they get to attack you once. They are at a minus two because you do run away, and um, so you are moving away from them and probably quite fast, but they get an attack of opportunity because I like attacks of opportunity and I really don't like the fact that they have been taken out of D&D because they are just, you know, so great. You know, you, you know, it's, I just love them. So, um, and then uh, most of the evening was role playing. Um, and I think in the last hour or so, we didn't roll a single die. Um, and it was, it was very refreshing. I really enjoyed it. Um, I have to say that Angelique Dupont seems to be slightly psychotic. Um, I didn't think traveling back in time would drive her over the edge. She's also now changed nationalities. She was French, but now she's speaking with a Russian accent. I don't know what, what's going on there, but um, yeah. Uh, so uh, tomorrow uh, we've decided to go to a con, it's a con in, in, in Galway. Um, we will try to play an RPG there. Um, we'll see if, if it works. I, I don't know. Um, I've never been... The way this works is you buy a ticket to get into the con, a day ticket or a weekend ticket, whatever you like, and then you have to pay... You have to buy a ticket to participate in a game. And, of course, there's limited spaces. Now, in the afternoon, they're playing three games. Now, if this means that they're three playing three games and it means that only 15 people can play one um one game you know for five people each 15 people will get to play so unless there is only 15 people someone will have to go home unhappy so i have no idea how they're going to do this i hope that it means that they have three games but they will be played in multiple instances concurrently but we'll see we'll see what happens i'll keep you posted on that other than that um like i said next week um we're going to explore london or Maybe Jane will be murdered by her best friend. We'll see. Um, yeah, but watch this space. It's it's going to be interesting. I think um, this talk uh, campaign is more about um, the inner demons than the outer gods. But um, yeah, I mean, as long as everybody's having fun, um, there is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so bye. <laughs>